that that will be most frequently asked. Okay, and I'll make sure if people know all those things. So that if you go for the interview, you should not face any problems. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, so this, these are the topics that I'll be covering in the manual testing, okay? So first is what is software testing, why it is important. Then next is software development life cycle. Uh, I, as I told you that uh, first in class we'll be discussing how the software development goes. Because testing is also a part of software development. See, when software development happens, it is, uh, I'll just tell you, you know, shortcut. Later we'll explain it, okay? First, there'll be some client. They will come up with some requirements and they will give it to your company. For example, you are working for Zenways. Just assume that. And then he works for his company. Maybe he is a client. He will come up, uh, maybe he is a business analyst or someone in his company. He will come up with a set of requirements to Zenways. Okay? And he will tell, let's see, I, I have an idea of designing an application. Let's uh, imagine the application is an uh, e-commerce application. You might have used Mintra or Flipkart. Right? So he has an idea that I want to design an e-commerce application and I want, he'll give you some functionalities to your company that I want, you know, uh, there, there should be a men's section, there should be a women's section, there should be a kit, kit section, under men's section there should be shirts, jeans, shoes, under women's section there should be Indian wear, western wear, again shoes, accessories, again kids, there should be kids uh, for girls, for boys and everything. So he, these are the specifications that he is giving to our company. Okay? Maybe I'm the project manager or something. He's passing that thing to me. But at the same time, you'll also be the part of the meeting. Whenever the meeting happens, once the deal is closed, all the people who are the project people will be part of the call that will be going on. So he'll give me the specification. Okay? Then see what, what happens. He'll give me some specification. Sometimes there can be misunderstanding. He wants something, but, but I'll understand something else, right? So in the there will be the first day phase will be the requirement analysis phase, in which when he gives me the requirement, it is our job to clarify every single doubt we have. Like okay, you told that you want a men section. So in men section, what all things you want? Men section, do you want any shirts? Do you want any jeans? Do you want this? So this is called query clarification, you know. So whatever things you give, because most of the times what happens, the client will have a big idea of what exactly they want. They don't, they'll just give you something, you know, they will not give you the clear understanding. They come up with some idea, they will pre present it to you. Then it is our job to make clear that what we have understood is exactly what they want. Because at the end when we start development and then they'll say that, no, that is not what I wanted. You are developing something else. I wanted something else. So it will be a problem. So first phase will be the requirement analysis phase, okay? Then the, the you know there will be software architecture. They will come up with the architecture of the program that software that we are going to design, and then the developer will start developing the application, and then the testers will test the application, and then at the end of the day it will be deployed for the users to use it. So that is a basic software development life cycle. You have to understand like that. But there are different models they follow, so we will discuss all those models one by one. So these are like waterfall model, V model, agile model, all these are the models. And there are other models also, we will discuss all those things one by one. Then the next thing is software requirement analysis. As I told, right, that uh, we will get the software and then we have to analyze it. See, analyzing is the same thing that we have to discuss that whatever we understood, is it fine or not? Is, is our understanding fine or not? And at the same time, testers, in this way, is no testers have to be very attentive, you know? Because what you understand from the requirement, based on that, you will write your test case. See, what is our agenda as testers? When I say R, you have to understand that I'm talking about the tester. See, testers' agenda is always to find where the developer has lost it, you know? For example, when these people gave us, for example, this is the phone. He gave me some requirement for the phone. He gave me, I am also part of the meeting as developer, you also part of the meeting as tester. You have, I have some, uh, I understood something that what he wants. I will code according to what I understood. Okay? You were the tester, you will test according to what you understood. Okay? So you have to make sure that what the people want, you have clear understanding of it. 
then only you can find the defect. If you don't have any idea, you will not be find the defect. And if you're not able to find the defect, you're not a good tester. So as a tester, you I always you should focus on whether the developer has missed it, what he missed it, whether the UI is proper or not, by UI is this user interface. But the, the, is it what the person who he wanted the same thing or he wanted something else and the developer have put it in some other way? So you and sometimes so they will not accept. The developers you know they have this bad habit. They will say no, this is fine. This is what is the clients want. You will have to sometimes fight for it. No, this is not the correct way to do it. You have done it wrong. That'll be, that will be happening happening all the time when you are a tester. You will have to fight for it. That no, this is not what the team wanted. They wanted something else. You have done it wrong. You have to fix it. Sometimes if it is clear thing, then they will accept that the yeah, is wrong. We will fix it. But sometimes they will not accept it. But you you should not give up as a tester. As a tester, you should be you know. Uh, like a fighter, always ready, and you should never shy away from talking. Okay, you should then whatever you feel, you should just go and tell them. Let's see, I feel this is wrong, and then only they will treat you as a good tester. If uh, you know uh, the developers will tell them and say, like, ah, yeah, I agree with you, then that should not happen. You should never agree with them. If you feel something is wrong, you should just go ahead and put your point first to the people. So then, next is what is test strategy? And how to create an efficient test strategy? So, see, test strategy uh, it comes to the team lead level, team lead level or the project manager level. This is basically creating a strategy that how the testing will be conducted. So, they will, uh, for example, if I am the test lead or you are the test lead or you are the test lead, so you are the test lead. You will have, you have two resources, me and Anita. So now you have to make sure how you are going to use me and Anita in most efficient way. To produce the most efficient testing result, okay, that the testing should be con conducted most efficiently, and none of the defects should get leaked. I'll discuss about the defect leakage also in the further class. See, the main idea should be there should not be a defect leak because if there is a defect leak, that is the best worst nightmare for the testers. For example, the Maggie thing, it was a defect leak, leak, okay, they missed it, and people found it, and people found it because of that it got. Van and it, see who was responsible for that tester and you know if anything goes wrong in a product, it's tester who's blamed for it. Developers know they will do their job. If something goes wrong, they will just blame the tester that they were supposed to test. Why didn't they test it? So you have to be very attentive. You have to make sure that nothing and especially if it is like some of the you know functionality part or something that should never you know you should never miss it. So that should be your agenda. So as a test lead, you will have to come with the test strategy that how, what all, uh, for example, with defect analysis, defect log, and what tool we have to use, and all those things. That also we'll discuss in details. Okay. Then, then we'll discuss what is manual testing. Uh, what is manual testing? Different types of manual testing. So under manual testing, we have like there are different very many types of testing. There'll be integration testing, smoke testing. Acceptance testing, black box testing, white box testing, all the things we'll discuss in detail, okay? Then the next next topic is what is test case and types of test cases and how to create a good test case. See, when you're a software tester, then writing test cases are considered to be a hard, okay? And better test case you write, more defects you will find out, okay? So when you when you join, you know, as any um, if you go for interview or something. That is one definite question they'll ask you. Like they'll give you some scenario and they'll tell you to come up with a test case for that. See, whenever you're writing a test case, you'll have to make sure that you're writing a perfect test case and you're covering up all the scenarios. In scenarios, there'll be positive scenarios, there'll be negative scenarios. All these things we'll discuss. Okay, and more things you cover with your test case, better your test case. Uh, you know, it is it will be easier for you to find the defect. Because what happens if we are all human beings, especially when we are doing manual testing, we are we tend to even if we know why you know we are doing the requirement analysis, we'll be knowing everything. But when we are testing the application, you know, few things will slip out of our mind. And especially the testers, you know, they are given given very limited time. Because what happens with these developers, and sometimes whatever timeline they are they have been given, they lose more than that. And as a tester, we are given very limited time. In that limited time, we have to test everything. And we cannot give excuse that I didn't get the time. 
sometimes yeah we can extend it for one or two days but within that given time frame we have to complete the execution so for that these are the ways you know there is this something called test case in which you cover up you write all the scenarios so that while testing you execute the test case you cover up most of the scenarios you will you will not miss anything there is something called the checklist that you can create in checklist you will write the main points that you have to test that okay i have to test login functionality i have to test search functionality that is a checklist then you will write the point and you will start checking it while testing that okay this is checked this is checked this is checked that is called, that is why it is called checklist it is it is to make your job easier and make your testing better okay then uh, okay how to create a good test okay. then after that obviously detect verification will because you will find some defect okay, you will find something as a defect but there are sometimes when that actually that is not a defect that also happens that you while requirement i told you right this should be you know very focused in the requirement analysis phase itself because they should understand the requirement very properly so sometimes we are also doing things it's not like being tested is thing we are bored that we will understand it right so sometimes we can miss few few of the specification they have given so we will test according to that specification what is there in our according to our understanding but developers have got the understanding right and they will develop according to their understanding so what will happen we will check uh, tell that this is a defect they will tell that that is not a defect so whenever we are raising a defect we should verify that that is actually a defect and the second thing is the defect that you are raising it should be reproducible by reproducible you mean that that defect every time you follow the same step that defect should come it should not happen like first time i did it it happened second time it did happen third time it did happen i mean just once it happened in the wrong way because the developers will tell you to reproduce it that okay how did you get the defect to reproduce it then if it is a defect we will fix it so you have to verify if you find some defect then it is your responsibility to verify it that yeah it is happening in the end of the day and so sometimes what happens some defect it is there okay but first it will happen second time it won't happen Third time it will happen again. So in that case, as a tester, it is your job to notify the people. So you can write that it is an inconsistent defect. Sometimes it's happening, but you should note it down because later they will find out they will come and they will tell you how come you missed this. So you should never give people chance to say that how did you miss it. That is our, you know, the main agenda of a tester should be they should not point finger at you saying that you missed this thing, you didn't test it. So whatever issue you find, you just write it down. That I found this issue. If it is reproducible, well and good thing. If it is not, you can just say that it is inconsistent, right? But I know that right now. You look into it if you can fix it or not. So they will tell. They will then take there is something called a path. They will path that by right, saying that okay, if it is a known issue, but we are not interested in fixing it. So you do whatever you want to do to let it pass. But we found it. So. That is what is defect verification. Then again, after verifying the defect, defect also will have a life cycle. First, you identify the defect, then you verify it, and the testers will fix it. The developers will fix it, then you will test it again. And that thing will be the defect. Okay, all these things we will discuss in detail. This is just the outline I'm giving you. What by the end of the the session will be not today's session, complete manual testing session. We will be doing all these things. Then we have. The after defect life cycle, we have defect reporting or defect tracking. Again, the same thing. Whatever defect you got, now you'll have to go and log it. Because if you say like I'm talking, I'll just tell you, hey, I found this defect in the, you know, is this port. But uh, there should be a proof, right? Otherwise, in future, so if you don't have the proof, nobody will listen to you. See, when you work in IT, proof matters a lot for everything. Even if small issue you find and you discuss it on the call, but if it don't have a mail or if you don't uh, lock it in the place where it is supposed to be locked, then it is your fault. You are supposed to do it and you should always do it without a fail. So these are the few standards you should always take care of when you're working in IT. Because there are different kind of people, you know, and everybody is so competitive. They, they, they will never Except if they are wrong. Even if you are disgusted and you have to say, hey, I told you on phone, they will be like, no, you never told me on phone, unless you don't have the recording. <laughs> you know? So, tracking everything is very important. Very, very important. So, for that also, we have many tools. We have Jira, we have um, something called Bugzilla, all those things are 
the, these are called testing tools also. And we can use it for the entire project for different different things. And we, we use it for logging the defect and managing the defect in every case. There you can assign the defect to the certain developer. They will look at once they fix it, you will give their comment is fixed. Then you will test it again. Then if again the issue is there, you will give your comment that no, this issue is still there. Then you can attach the screenshots and everything will be in such tools. And you have to use it accordingly. Ah, this is the tools used for defect tracking. So we will discuss about the tools that Bugsy Lands here. They are like most predominant used tools in the industry. So we will discuss about them. Then last but not the least, test summary or test report preparation. That again is the headache of the test lead. They have they have to make the they will gather everything and how many defects we found, how many days we took, what are the defects are open defects, what are the defects that has been closed. Those things again the test lead will have to make a report of it. In order to see this report will give you the kind of reflection of the quality of the product that has been done. Okay, so um, since after one or two years, it will be working well. You can also become a tech team with your test team. So you should be knowing all these things. You should not tell like all that trainer do talk about this. So yeah, that is that is it. So these are things we'll be discussing as part of manifest. Okay, yeah. And after that will be automation testing and will be the next step that maybe I will think or some other thing we can do. But still manual testing I don't want to do that. Okay. Now so do you have do you guys have any questions so far? You can ask how are you talking? Talk. <laughs> the session should be very interactive. You know, then I also enjoy it. And you will come up with the question and be like, yeah, these people are so interested. And then you will also, whatever doubts you have, I can clear it. So, so far, you, Anita, you have any doubts? Anything coming to your mind, some question? Anything, not related to testing only, anything related to industry. Anything, you can ask. Yes, <laughs> I don't want to use time. <laughs> Okay, I'll find. <laughs> okay, guys. So, any questions so far? You? You can call me Shamabhi. Because if you work in IT, there's no man. We are all peers. So, if uh, I remember when I was trained, so we had a trainer in the beginning. Uh, so, she was like, every time you tell uh, you can ma'am, you have to give me 100 rupees. And that is the whole thing we are in there. Okay. Yeah, so every time you tell me, uh, ma'am, I'll charge you 100 rupees for that. So make sure you don't get bankrupt here. My mouse is not working. Okay, so enough of the, you know, I started some light joke. You can see this, this screen. See, this is the history of software, how the testing started. Read it and then I'll explain more exactly. If you want, you can also go and join me there. <laughs> I, because now he has started showing this. And then after that, uh, the main things like test case design and all these things 
So yang yeah, so let me do the part of our automation. That is our automation tool. Uh, see, um, I'll tell you why you need to learn it. See, the first thing is, uh, if you're a tester and you don't know manual testing, then they will not teach you other testing. That is the most important thing. Because there are few things that only a manual testing can test. Sometimes what happens, two things which is not possible to automate. I told you, right? Automation is in the you know blooming phase. It has just started in the industry. So sometimes there are a few things. Right now in my application, what is happening, we are dragging it and dropping it. So we have to drag one thing from our system and drop it to the code. So that drop, drag and drop, we are not able to automate it. So we are finding out the tools which can do it. We are researching on it. So you will face you will face such kind of things when you are testing an application. So in that case, if you are automation tester, you cannot help it. You have to do manual testing at that. So that is why manual testing is very important. And even if you are automation tester, there is no software application where there will be only automation tester. It's not possible. You are a good tester even if you know manual testing. You can announce it at the job. But if you don't have any idea about manual testing, you cannot go ahead with automation testing. Because you should be knowing basics of the testing, or how to test. Then you can come up with a scenario. Then you can write down script for automation testing. So for that, you need to do manual testing, and then you can go ahead with the automation. And even that is what I was telling. So it is a very good thing that if you learn automation now. Why? Because we already have manual testers. They can hire the manual testers. But if you both manual tester and automation tester, they'll get both the qualities, right? So what will you want? Again, it is about quality. As a tester, you have better quality. So everybody goes for the better quality, right? So they will prefer hiring you rather than hiring the person who goes only manual test. Well, each and every time you have to begin with manual. Yeah. Manual is the base. Uh, or sometimes uh, what will happen if you are working in IT, you will be designated as, as the automation tester. I will be designated as the manual tester. So parallel also can happen. I will be doing my manual testing job. You will be doing your automation testing job. This application should be designed with manual testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma ma I told you because there are few things which automation cannot handle. So such things in that scenario automation because right now I can write about my application. So the whole automation as they are literally stuck in, they are finding a way to you know come up with a tool that they can use for automating and the manual people are doing their jobs. So and yeah, so there are a few things where automation, yeah, you have to, you know, you have again you have to be very you know, furious when you're an automation tester because automation is like every new day you know, there'll be new, new automation tools will be coming. So you should be aggressive to learn. More you know about automation, the more research you will do, better automation tester you get treated as. Because it's the beginning, right? So if you have more knowledge, they'll be like, oh, this person has more knowledge, like that. And selenium is treated as, selenium is again booming because it is an open source. I mean, you don't have to pay for it. And it helps you to test the web application. And web application is, you know, everywhere you go, people are, for everything they are designing a web application. So for testing a web application, we use them. That is why it is, you know, so much in demand right now. And if you know Selenium, then, uh, I mean, it is for sure you get a better web application. Okay, then, to start, to start, okay? So can you see my slide? Yeah. So it says, what is quality? So can you tell me what you mean by quality? And I'll tell you why I'm talking about quality. Uh, as a software tester, we are also known as quality analyst. That will be your designation. When you work as a software tester in the industry, we call it quality analyst. So what do you mean by quality analyst? The person who analyzes the quality. So basically, we should know what is the quality and how it is related to testing. So don't read the definition. Uh, you tell me what is the you know, quality. You think and tell me. What is, you don't have to think about in the software perspective. Just tell me in like usually what is quality. I need to tell. She's not saying anything. 
Don't look at the slides. You think what is quality? Quality people in general life you know this school has good quality. This person has good uh, so you tell me how what is quality? She has to read it. <laughs> she has decided she'll read the group. Now, can you tell what is the quality? Mm -hmm. uh, we have to test it on high quality. Yeah, you're going to write high quality. So, how do you see this person has high quality? Depending on the product or application, we need to use high quality product or high quality. Okay, so if I tell, give you this phone, how can you tell whether this is a high quality phone or low quality phone? How will you tell? We have to list it. So what will you do? For example, this phone is worth 12,000. Okay, so how will you tell the quality of this phone? You will take another phone which is worth 12,000. Okay, and then you will see, you will have some specification. For example, your budget is 12,000. My budget is 12,000 rupees. In 12,000 rupees, I have decided to buy a phone. So now everybody has their own set of specification, what they want in their phone. For example, he must be wanting a good gaming quality. I will I want a phone which has better camera. You will want a phone which has something. What do you want in your phone? Good music system. Right? What do you want in your phone? Like you have a set of specifications. When you are when you're spending 12,000 rupees, you will have something that I want these kind of things in my phone. So what will you do? You will go and you will check all the phones in the market worth 12,000 rupees. Okay? And you will then you will come there. That okay, this phone is there. Then you have other phone of 12,000 rupees. There. You have other phone of 12,000. You will go with something general. That's good gaming quality. I will go with something general. That's camera quality. And for me, that thing is specification. Because I want a better camera. I have nothing to do with gaming. She will go with something which is better sound quality. You will go with something which has, uh, you know, which is durable, which has better battery backup. If maybe you are working late hours and you want a phone, you know, the battery should be durable. So you will go with a phone which has better battery quality. So that is what is quality. We judge it, we compare it with other peer products and we see that, okay, how is my product, whether it is meeting all the specifications or not. See, what is the basic specification of a phone? You should be able to make a call. You should be able to send a message. For him, it should, it should have all the baby games. You should be able to download his favorite game, Clash of Clan or whatever. You should be able to, you know, it should be, you know, charged for 12 hours in a short. You should not get this charge. She should get a better sound quality. I should get a better camera. That is how the quality will be judged. And that is how we test the software quality as well. So quality is nothing, but it is meeting the specifications, fitness for use, you know, meeting the specification. I just said what is specification. For different people, it will be different, different specifications. And when we work on IT, the specification is not decided by us. It will be given from the clients. And we have to test that whatever specifications client has given, it is meeting all the specifications. That is the key of testing. First thing we have to do is check that our application Applications meeting all the functional and non-functional specification. I will discuss what is functional and non-functional specification. Okay. Then the second thing is fitness for use. That's what I told, right? That if I buy, I buy a phone, I have to make sure that it is useful for me. Otherwise, I will not spend money in it. You will you spend money in the phone will get discharged in two minutes? No way, right? Why will I spend so much money for that? So the product which we are going to give to the users, first of all, we have to make sure that it is fit for users. Then only we can deploy it in other users. If I only find it users, why will I deploy it in the market, right? Nobody will use it. So that is fitness for use. Then free from defect. Free from defect is the same thing. If it is not meeting the specification, that means it is a defective case. And one thing, from free from defect, I would like to tell you something. See, as a tester, uh, you think when you will test an application, you will be able to cover 100% of things. Like you will be able to find, it, make sure that this application doesn't have even one defect. Is it possible? Tell me, Anika. Now I ask questions from you. <laughs> you have to tell. Yeah. 
Huh? How question? Uh, do you think it is possible, uh, like when you are testing an application and you are a tester, do you think you will uh, make sure that the application will not have even one defect? Is it possible? I mean, when you are telling that we are, have tested the application, will you be 100% sure that that application will not have even a single defect when you are done with testing? Because it is our job, basically, to find a defect. So now you are done with your job, you have tested the application and you have to tell your project manager that I have done my job, testing is done. So does that mean that application is 100% tested and it won't have any defect? Say yes or no. Yes. Okay, and you? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, both of you are right, but at the same time, both of you are wrong. See, we have to test in a way that we should cover the maximum number of defects. But it is never possible to give an application which don't have a single defect. It is not possible. Because first of all, we are human beings, you know, and we are trying to cover everything, but there will be something which will be missed. But that something which you miss, it should not be a common thing that the user will find out. So, as a tester, that is our, what she said is right. That we should test in a way that we should not miss a single thing. But yeah, our focus should be more on this. If, even if something is missed, that should not be a very important thing. You know, so that maybe users will never get to know. That, yeah, they will never find out that this, there is a defect. Our agenda is to please the users. Our agenda, and one more thing is, as a tester, it is not our job to change the functionality of any application. For example, uh, he's the, your vendor, he came and he told that I want to design an application which should have a search functionality. So as a tester, I should not tell that to be in search functionality, if you give, give the look ahead search, you know, it will be better. You should not tell all those things. He told you that I want a search functionality, that means you should, you know, if you, that you can give a suggestion, obviously, you can always give a suggestion. But if he has specified that he just want the search functionality that you search for, for example, you write, uh, uh, you know, menwear or you write a shirt and you click on search, then you should give you the list of shirts that is available in the application. But there's something called look ahead search. You, you might have noticed, right, when you go in Google application and you write A, then A, B, then it will start showing you something which is related to A, B. That is called look ahead. That you will just type something and it will start suggesting you that maybe you're looking for this, you're looking for this. So these are the enhancements. In further cycle, maybe the developer, the vendor itself will come that nowadays I'm seeing all the applications are using look ahead, so I also want to look ahead. And then that will be the, again the different SDLC will follow for that. Okay? So we our job is to test what has been specified to us. We don't have to do anything else. He told I want search functionality, I will test. The search functionality is working exactly the way it is expected. Okay? So that is called meeting the specifications. And fitness for use I already told. And free from defects. So free from defects, obviously it cannot be free from 100% defects. But we have to make sure that it should be free from as many defects as we can make sure of. And if the users will find a defect, then it will, call, it will be called as a defect leakage. So, for example, see, uh, I'll show you, and I'm going to Gmail, okay? No, not Gmail. Can you see my screen? See, when you uh, go to Flipkart and show it. You see Flipkart is doing it. My system is a little slow, so I that. Yeah, I think it's loaded now. See, you can see, right? This Flipkart has this search functionality, okay? So maybe the user has told you that I want my application to have a search functionality, just the way Flipkart has. So he will tell that you should enter something. For example, I'll enter shirt. 
Okay, see, this is called look ahead. If you started writing something and it is showing you so many results related to it, right? You can see shirts in men, casual and party wear, t-shirts, shirt for boys, shirt for girls, and all those things. So that is called look ahead. So you just enter something and they started showing you. But maybe the my vendor, what they have given, they have not given the look ahead for them. You and you write shirt and you click on it. Then you should match all the results related to shirt and it should display you the result. So now I'll get the result. See, so I got showing 1 to 60 of the 3, 35,000, no, 3,54,189 results. For sure, so many results are matching. And it has displayed me all the results matching to it. So basically, it is doing the job. So my testing right now, it has passed. Hmm? So I, I was supposed to test it. I tested it. It's working fine. So that means my product is working as expected. Not entire product. Only the, this functionality. That is search functionality. Then again, we have here the login functionality. When we click on login, see, so beautifully they have given all the information that enter email, mobile number, they are given option enter password. In case you have the password, they have given you link called for God. So now when you are testing it, you just don't have to enter a positive username password and click on login. That is not a proper way of testing. You have to make sure that everything which is written here, everything you test. You test when you write and when you click on forgot link application, what is happening? Is it working properly or not? What should happen when you click on forgot? Basically, they will ask you for your email address, right? So when you click on forgot, that will be the you know that is how you have to test. You click on forgot, then it should ask you for enter your email address in which uh, on which I wish you send the password or where you can reset your password. They send you a link. So you have to test all these things one by one. Then you can enter a wrong username, wrong email, and you can enter a correct password, and you click on login. Then you should get a, you know, saying that either your username or your password is wrong. So these are the things we have to test. Sometimes, nowadays, few people password, they set a limit. That your password should have one character, it should, it should be total of eight characters, it should have one special symbol, one a number, all those things. So those things you have to try all the possibilities, you know. You give only numbers one 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 and then check what is happening. You you mix the characters and maybe give a very long password and then see what is happening, whether they are allowing you to have or whether the proper mail message is displayed or whether the application is crashing. So when we test our our main motto is to positive scenarios will always work properly, okay? Because testers when they are designing, they also do unit testing. So they will make sure that all the things are working properly. We have to make sure whether the in what all scenarios application might fail. See, for example, maybe you are a naive user. You have not used any application before, and you don't know how to do things. So you should use the application where things can go wrong, and then what should happen in that situation? In that situation, whether the application is working as expected or not. That is the main agenda of testing an application. You should always make sure that in all the scenarios, all the ways, whatever you are doing, your application should work as expected. It should not crash. You should, you, you should check the performance. That you should not take loss of time. Will you use an application if you enter the URL and it will take 10 minutes to load you the setting and it will be taking 10 minutes? Nobody will use this application, right? So that is called non-functional. In the non-functional, we will check for performance, we will check for security. For example, if you go for banking application, then what will be the, your more, most priority? That it should not get flipped. Nobody should be able to see your account number, right? Otherwise, you will never use an application. And that is why even now many people avoid using all that application because of the security purposes. So we as a tester have to make sure that those things don't happen. Hmm? So you click on forget. And you don't have to assume anything. When you are testing something, you should be free from all the assumptions. You do not think that this will work fine with you. Now, if you assume something, that only thing will go wrong. Make sure that I assume that forgot link is working fine. There will be a problem with forgot. So, if everything you see in the application, you have to test it. You have to click on every link and see that link is not breaking. It is going to the page it is expected to go. That is your job.
Okay. So I clicked on forgot and I got a message. Please enter valid email ID or mobile number. So whatever they'll say, you have to do. And these things, no, see, right now this application is already developed. So we don't know. But in the beginning when the application is not done, no, these all things will be the specification. These things will be given by the client to you. And I want these things in my application. That if the user has forgotten the password, he sh there should be a link called forward password. You should click on it, then this thing should happen. And the developers will write the code. We will test it. That yeah, this is what the vendor had told, and this is how it is works. Okay. If you have any questions, you did not see. No. Okay, then I'll ask you a question. What all, when you test this application, what all things you think you should test? You tell me. Uh, if you give any uh, email ID and password which is not already existed, you have to check for that. Hmm. If you can log in and if you be around yourself, yeah. like you have to sign up for the first time you can reach in every application. Hmm. See, that is how you should think in such a way. You tell me Anita, like you see this application and tell me what are things you should cut, what are scenarios you can come up with testing. It's a huge application, you will get hell lot of scenarios in this application. So come up with at least two three scenarios. You tell me from your and what all you should test. Anything you can tell. And now you have to give answer. I'm telling you, you're not opening your mouth. You see everything. You can use a laptop also and tell me what all things you can test. There's so many things. See, you can tell that what if what will happen if we click on the shirt? Is it working as expected? Yeah, right? Likewise, you tell me something. Like what all things we can test? You can see something called cart over here. So cart is one of the most important functionality. You can tell me we have to test the cart functionality, how it will work, right? Because if when you see an e-commerce platform, cart is one of the most important functionalities, right? So these are the things you have to test. Everything and nothing should go missing. And when you click on card, then the order will come. So order will again be a very important thing, right? Because when you click on order, well, that will be the third party vendor. You have to make the payment over there. So where, whether there it is working fine or not. Those are the crucial things when you test an application. It should work fine. It should not go wrong at any cost. If it will go wrong, you're screwed. So those things you have to make sure and you have to think in that way, okay, what are the most, see that is what I told that application cannot be bug free, but you have to make sure that the crucial things work should always work as expected. For example, if I click on this shirt, it should be able to show me, if it will come as blank, sometimes it is fine, like only once or something. But it should show me all the details of the shirt because if it will, it will not show me the details, I will not buy it, right? So it will depend on the application. You will get different kind of applications. This is an e-commerce application. You will get a banking application. In that you have to think, okay, banking application, what are things can go wrong? You should always think, you should never think, think about positive things. You should always think that okay, what thing can go wrong? What thing can go wrong? And if that will go wrong and I will not identify it, then I'm dead. You should always think like that, okay? When you're testing an application. So see here you can see many things. There's like something called a card. Then we have sign up. What is the difference between login and sign up? Can someone tell me? Uh, Anita will tell. <laughs> sign up also you'll get give the email address and password. What is the difference? I think he knows, but you don't have to answer. She has to answer. Then why will they give? See, for example, when you go to Facebook, what they tell you, you get two things, right? You get if you are already a registered user, then log in. Otherwise, sign up. So login is that you already have an account. Some time in your past you have already signed up. First user will sign up always. First user who doesn't have an account. 
So he will be silent. So what can you test in silent? You tell me. Uh, so what can go wrong when you sign up an, in an application? See, for example, if you write an already existing, uh, you know, account, you email address, maybe it should give you a message saying that I think you are already uh, an existing user. Better log in rather than signing up. See, because you are already an existing user and you are trying to sign up. So as soon as you enter your login uh, email address, they will tell you that this is a registered user. Sometimes happens, right? That you already have an account with something. You forgot your password or something. You will try to sign up. It happens with me all the time in Paytm. I forget my password and then I try to sign up using my same account. I mean, what is my email address? I will give all the time the same email address. Then they send me a message saying that you have already an existing account. I think you have forgotten your password. Please click on forgot password again. That is also the option, right? Because email address you remember. So what can go wrong? You have forgotten your password. So they will send you a message saying that please click on forgot password link and use your account. So those are the things you have to test. See how you assume that both are same. You should not assume it. Because if they have given two buttons, that means it has different functionalities. Otherwise, they will not waste the, this, this home screen with you see is the most precious thing they have. And they will not use a single space in it. Whatever is there, that is the most important thing they want to see. That is why they have displayed it there. They will not repeat one thing again and again. And again, if they are repeating as a defect, you go and tell them that why have you repeated this button? We already have this button. Sign in. Why are you giving sign up here? It is you're wasting the home screen page. And why will user click on the same thing again and again? So remove this button. That will again be a defect. So yeah, that is that is the functionality. You have to test all the functionalities are working as expected. Okay? And the quality. Then something called there's other non-functional things also we have to test. So under non-functional tests, we have performance. Performance is like you, it, the, your application should work in all all the circumstances. If you have 2G data, then also it should work. If you have 3G data, then also it should work. If you have Wi-Fi, then also it should work. You know, some applications it is like a nightmare if you're using a 2G data, it will not load only because it is maybe it has some kind of requirement it will not load. So you have to, especially when you're uh, see there's something called mobility testing. In that you will test the mobile application. Because right now mobile is everywhere, right? People are using every every possible application. Now it is more than desktop people spend time on mobile. While traveling also you will be shopping, everything. So in mobility, you have to, you know, test all these things that application is working in all sort of, you know, internet connection, in 2G, 3G, and all those things. Then what is reliability? By reliability we mean you see the this phone, it is working now. But what if for one day it is working fine and the next day only it will stop working? Then it is not a good application, right? So by reliability means that application should be reliable. You can rely on the application that is it is working as expected for a longer period. Okay? So that is reliability. If reliability for testing reliability, you cannot just test that time. You maybe it will take a period of time, maybe after some time also you you have to keep testing and the application should keep working in the same way again and again. That is what is reliability. For example, the Gmail application, still it is reliable, right? It's been we have been using it for so many years, and still it is working as expected. So it is a reliable application, and that is why every almost every single person has a Gmail account. Many people must not be. I don't have a Yahoo account, but I have a Gmail account because Yahoo got hacked long back, and then people lost their trust. So such kind of things should not happen. That is for security issue. There, like your account should not get hacked and all this, especially if it is a web application. So that is called security. So I have mentioned security. Maintainability means again, this, the application should be maintainable. For example, see, um, there are many applications, right? Mintra. So they, what they do, they keep enhancing the product, right? You might have seen in, in like in past when you started using Facebook, it was completely different. I don't even remember how it was, but it was very different. Do you remember when when we had that Facebook four or five years back? And now to see Facebook, they have completely changed everything. See, they have changed so much that we don't remember how exactly it used to be like five years back. 
So that is, it is maintainable. They are able to maintain it. They are able to enhance it. When you de develop a software application, it should always be maintainable. Because software industry is changing every second. So you should make sure that whatever it is changing, our application should adapt to it. It should be maintainable. So that is called maintainability. And then portability. Portability again is, portability means that your, whatever thing you are testing, especially when you are testing a web application, you should make sure to test this portability. Portability means your application should work as expected in all, in all environments. And in all, for example, you tell me, uh, for Flipkart, what can, can be your portability testing? How can you test? Portability means it should work in all the devices as expected. So how will you test? How, what will be your approach to test the portability? Okay, you tell. She will not tell. <laughs> No, you, uh, not sure. You have to test Flipkart application. Whatever you want to test, how will you do the portability portability testing for that? I just tell. So I, in a way, I have already answered your question. But it should work as expected in all the devices, in all the environment. Okay. So what will be be your approach? I have half answered it. So tell me. Anita? Okay, can you tell me what is browser and how many browsers have you used? Browser? What is browser? Ah, that is what? That is the browser. Ah, yeah. Yeah, so we have different browsers. We have Opera web browser, we have Mozilla browser, we have Chrome browser, we have... In the world browser is Internet Explorer. So you should always touch an application in Internet Explorer. If it works in Internet Explorer, it will work everywhere. So if you want to do the best portability touching, go tell the application in Internet Explorer. If it's working fine, you are you know good to go. That okay. If it's working in Internet Explorer, then we are okay, happy. Because Internet Explorer is not that enhanced browser. Many things that goes wrong, especially they don't support the you know JavaScript and all these things. And all these web application you know, they use JavaScript a lot. So sometimes what happens? Few of the things it goes wrong when you're uh, using an application in Internet Explorer. So, see, sometimes you know, the client only will tell you, you don't have to, you know, test my application in Internet Explorer. So, in that case, when client has specified that you don't want, to, I don't want my application, people who are using Internet Explorer, if they don't want to use my application, I'm fine with that, then you can leave. Because client himself, they have told that you don't need to test it. Otherwise, when you're testing on web application, you have to test it in all the browsers possible. And at the same time, oh, you have missed me one more thing. That was the browser part. One more thing you think. I told device level also. So what will be your next approach for testing a web application? Device level. Okay. Anita? And that is very important when you are testing mobility. You should always make sure that it's working that way. Anita, anything in mind? <laughs> that is obviously if that is happening then that is the most failed application ever that if you write a URL and just going to some other then that is there only that application is of no use but see which mobile you are using which mobile you are using what, which mobile you are using? Yeah, see, all of us are I'm using, someone will be using Samsung, right? And mobility testing, that is the best, worst challenge you have. Someone has iPhone, right? So, on every mobile, the application should work as expected. What happens? See, Lumia it doesn't support many of the games. That is why people have stopped using Lumia. That is one of the draw drawback of Nokia, and it's going to close. M many people have stopped buying Lumia phones. You know why? Because it doesn't support many of the application. It doesn't support. So I am spending twenty thousand. Why will I buy a phone which is not supporting many application? Why will not I buy a phone?
which is supporting 10,000 more applications than the one which I'm buying. There was a time when I was buying this phone, I, I wanted to buy Lumia because Shah Rukh Khan used to advertise for it. So, you know, I wanted to buy it. Then later I thought, why? What is wrong with me? Why should I buy a phone which doesn't support so many things and it is charging so much? So, you should have to make sure that your application, which you, especially if you are testing a mobile application, mobile application you have, this is the key thing, that you should test it with all kind of mobile, you should, have, you should test on you know, Samsung and then again there is something called the, you know, we call it, there is a term for it called responsive, that your application should look properly on all the devices, when you are testing, it, when you are using it in tablet, it should look properly in tablet, when you are using it in mobile, it should use proper mobile some and now all the applications are like mobile friendly they look very good in mobile also and in desktop also but earlier you remember two three years back applications they used to look little cranky in mobile you never felt like using it on mobile because it used to look somewhat you know it, you have to navigate from left to right or something and now they have you know made it responsive so you will see for example if you see flipkart and phone it will look completely different all the menus will come like one by one right and see i don't have wi-fi i guess but the same thing if you open on phone flipkart it will have the menu will be decided it will be you know consolidated in the left and once you click then it will show you man and again you click on man then it will show you shirt like this it will not everything will not be you know one by one so that is called responsive so you have to check for that also that if it is a mobile application you should check that it is working as expected on both the devices okay so that is called portability. So these are the things you should make sure, uh, like when you are testing an application or if you go for interview, they will ask you all this thing, especially if, it's, if it is a web test, uh, like web based company or if they are into web based development, they will ask you such questions, okay, and you have to answer all these things. Okay, so next is what is software testing. I think most of the things I have already described in detail, so you can just read the definition and then what you I'll explain it again. I'll just give me two minutes. Okay, I'll be back. I think 
See, the name suggested, right? Functional. So what do you mean by function? Something related to functionality. Right. So functionality will be the way we discuss login functionality, sign up functionality, search functionality, buy cart functionality, order functionality. They are all the functionality. So that is that it is expect what is expected from the application is do that thing. Then other is non-functional. That also we just discussed. Non-functional is something which is not related to what the application is supposed to do, but is something how the application is supposed to behave. It's something like the performance. For example, you all of you might have tried to book tickets using IRCTC, right? How such a pain it is, right? It is so such a slave, slow application. You get mad while booking a ticket using IRCTC, right? So those are called non-function. This is not related to functionality. You are able to book a ticket using IRCTC. That is what is the functionality, right? That you should be able to book a ticket. But it's so painful, it's so slow, and since we don't have any other option, that is why we are using IRCTC. If we get another option faster, we will never look at look back at that application. So those are the non-functional. Since we don't have a choice, we are using IRCTC. Just imagine if you get choice, then what will you do? You will not use it ever, right? So those are the non-functional aspects that we have to test and under non-functional aspects we'll have performance. We discussed already what you mean by performance. Then we have readability, we have maintainability, security and portability. So now I'll ask uh, who? I'll ask Vishmaya, what is maintainability? I just said, right? What is it? Yeah, the application should be should perform properly now we are doing that application so it should be maintainably safe in the moment. Yeah and I said something else also like right? what do you mean exactly that is not what is maintainable. Right now it's just uh from the from anyone's side. What do you mean by maintainability? Can you tell? See I just said right see right now the application is working fine. But every application will be designed now it will not work the same way forever. We keep changing. So, yeah, so the application should be, see, most of the time it is not tester's job, frankly speaking, because we will test now only that how the application is working. But basically that is how the application should behave. It should be maintainable. It should always be ready to ready for the changes. Whatever change the clients do, we should be able to, you know, modify it and then be used. So that is what is maintainability. I'll ask you what is portability with me. I took lots of time to explain that. You have to say, see, you are going to be a tester. You cannot be shy. You have to talk a lot. Okay, so you should ask me, right? I told you to do. Understand, you ask me. See, portability is something that the application should work same way in all the environments. Okay. Ha. By environment you mean we have Windows, we have Linux, we have any other oh, uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu is also part of Linux. So we have different operating system. So everybody doesn't use same operating system. I have I have this Windows. You will have something else. You will have something else. Few people you guys are crazy about math, so they will be using math and it, so you know different people have different operating systems. In phone we have Android, so there are different type of operating system that we have. So it should work same way on all the operating systems. And again we have different browsers. So I, I told you about Internet Explorer, right? So it should work like same way on all the browsers. That is what is portability. Now Anita will tell me what is portability. I just explain how you explain. Tell. Yeah. Yeah. You will have to say today. I'll make you say something. Well, I'm just wait on this now. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's. Ha, tell me what is portability, Anita? Hmm? Okay. Okay. So you understood, huh? Huh? It's okay. You understood, right? What is code is right? You see, I'll just tell you one thing. Uh, when you work in IT industry, uh, you should be open to talk. You will have to talk to everyone. And uh, 
that is one of the most mandatory thing you should have okay you should be open and especially you are going as a software tester when you are a quality analyst mode they will see how confident you are so now like, see here we are like we are all same kind same level of people right so in front of me you are the feel shy and when you will be comfortable in front of me you will be comfortable in front of 10000 other people so try to do that okay this is one of my job i have to make your job ready right so that is why i'm asking you i understand that you are a little shy but that is why i'm asking you this question you have to i cannot stop asking i will keep asking and at a point you will feel come whenever you are comfortable you say i will work okay because i want to know whether you understood she she told she didn't understand portability right so you have to super hours yeah yeah okay feel free to ask question feel feel free to talk anything not really related to testing any thing that is bothering you you can ask me okay okay so now you understand what is software testing right and what are the key areas where we should focus by right? testing sure we have to focus because if we have to see when the sign up work up on the software was and password to log in to that we see how to focus and we have to test them yeah exactly how to function the maintenance about that particular application when it is maintainable regularly the application and then other things are Finally, you understood, right? Okay. I mean, now. Readability is. Huh. Readability. Huh. Readability. Readability. That is why I didn't explain. For example, I told you, right? The readability is nothing when you see the application. You should be comfortable to use it. It should look pleasant to your eyes. Because if the application, sometimes what happens? No, when. Yes. Huh. And sometimes that is called UI testing. Okay. UI means user interface. How the application is looking. User interface. We are the users. And how the interface is. That is why it is called UI. So it is called UI testing. So in that you will, uh, you know, these the it is also a way of testing, and in that also you will raise defect. For example, login the button is looking very small, so you can, uh, you know, log a defect saying that login button is not looking proper and I think user will get confused. Likewise, you can use defect like, for example, in in a tab, there will be there will be various things, right? There will be home, there will be uh, I want you to your coffee. Far more than this. You want coffee, something? Very much. Very much. You want coffee? No, no. I I I have come here many times. It's okay. I don't talk. Drink so that I drink, but only made by me. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so those are called UI testing. Okay, user interfaces. In that you can uh, you will see sometimes you no know, in some application the tabs will not be aligned. One tab will be like it is up. One tab type tab will be little down. So those things you can tell that it's not looking proper. All the tabs should be in the same align. It should have the same size. Two tabs will be like little little bigger. And sometimes application the border you can see the border. You should never see the border of an application. It should look. Proper. I mean, uh, sometimes what happens is you can see the application. You no, know, after you keep moving the pipe tab to the right side, you can see there will be some blank space there. That should not happen. So such kind of things you can raise as part of UI bug. That is called you know cosmetic bugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will be again a uh, little bit a part of testing. But uh, if you have any doubt, you can ask. See, the UI bug. No, uh, yeah, sure. You want what to say? Yeah, she took Which application? I don't have any application in mind. Which is? Do you, do you know about any application which has which looks little bad? Wait, let me think. There must be some application. Okay, I'll I'll explain you with some good application only. Hmm.
I mean, when you use that application, you don't feel like you know using it. Yeah, you don't feel like oh god, it's so, such an annoying application. Nothing is clear. I'll I'll show you two applications, okay? And now I'll ask you which one is more pleasant to your eyes, okay? It's it's kind of annoying, or it is good. Okay, so I'll take example of crafts over there. What is it? K R F F T. See, this is Jabon application, okay? You see the UI. It look, it looks beautiful, don't it? I mean, everything is like so clean. You can see this is the car. This is something which you love. They make a heart shape so that will make you understand that oh, it is something which you like, right? Then we have like everything is categorized so properly, women, men, kid, accessories, brand. See, that is that is what is called UI. Everything is looking proper. For example, this women, men, you see user interface. Yeah. Because see, we are the users and see we don't know what is happening back end, right? How the how the URL is coming to us or whatever. We are just seeing it. That is why it is the interface to the user. This is what the user can see. That is why it is called user interface. Okay. And see crafts villa. As she told that it is not that good. Okay. So we'll see. And see whatever I'm telling, next class I'll ask you people. So you have to, you know, understand everything. Whatever see the way she asked, right? Whatever you don't understand, feel free to ask me. Okay. Ah, see, this is Crafts Villa. See the UI by UI what we mean, what application, how it looks, and how easy it is to navigate. Okay. So if you come here, see you click on women, they're showing you the drop down, right? It is such a good idea, right? You just click, you just took you you must be having a question in your mind that what will happen if I go to women, you just took it like this and they started showing that wow, see you have so many other things under women section. So they, they are giving you very properly that there's something called new in, new in means what, that what is the cloth, new in clothing, what are the new trends in clothing, what are the new shoes in the new, new in, what are the new bags. So you know, in a way it already gave you an idea. When you're shopping sometimes you have, you have in your mind while when you're shopping right you want some new style which has come to the market or sometimes you just want to buy you know maybe some tops or t-shirts or whatever so they have given a category saying top tees and shirts like that so this is a beautiful example of a beautiful UI and see everything is so aligned you think see see the you know if you see here everything is top eye somewhere see everything is properly aligned right Everything. So if you see the character side, everything has the same size. Same space between everything, right? So that is a proper one. And then the design it will go from that way. It, it, it might be like, you know, the alignment must be different. For example, new in is coming little above ethnic wear or something. Then it will not look that good to our eye, right? It will look some more like, you know, not that clean. So as a software tester, we have to tell them that see this is not looking good. You, you should change it. Or sometimes what will happen, for example, the new in, will, they'll write it very big and it will look somewhat different. Then we should, just being as a software tester, we can tell that the font should be a little lesser. It's not looking good. So that is called UI test. Okay? This is what is UI. Okay, so functional properties you people understood, right? Uh, Anita. Uh, can you tell like something small? You don't have to explain everything. Just one word also. Okay. 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 Oh my God! So shy you are. Just got married. No, I didn't get married. Oh, he's okay. brother. He's your brother. Okay. I am so sorry. I just thought you came with him. Okay. Then this. Uh, what we need to test when we test an application. Okay, so this is same. See, I told you, right? When we do something, we should come up with a strategy to do that thing, right? 
For example, uh, when we start cooking also, we get some, you know, start, because we decide, right, how we are going to cook. Like, for example, if I start cooking, I'll make a, I'll first we we'll decide the menu, right, that okay, we have, I have to cook this thing. For example, I have to cook fish. Then what I'll, I need to do, I, I, I'll think that, okay, what are the things I need? I need to buy the fish, then I need oil, I need this, I need that, and then I need to cook. So likewise, when we, when, we, when we start testing an application, you should ask yourself a few questions. Like, what are the things I need to test? Okay? So these are the questions you will ask, and you will find the answer to it while testing the application. Okay? So first question is, does the software meet the requirement fully or completely? Same thing I have been repeating, right? That you get the requirement from the client, and when you test it, your first thing is to test that all the requirements are met. Okay? For example, the login is one of the requirements. So I have to test that login is working as specified by the client. They will specify a way. They will tell the user should enter username. You sometimes they'll tell username can be only phone number, or sometimes they'll tell username can be email and phone number both. So we have to test them both ways. When they'll tell both, first we'll test only with the phone number. Second is we'll test only with the email address. Third thing will either give one or both. Like we have to test everything which has been mentioned by the by the client. So that is does the software meet the requirements fully or completely or not? That is the one thing. Second thing is do all the features work as expected? As I told you, right? That they will specify many things. So one way maybe it is working that I just enter my email address, I enter my password, I log in, it is working fine. But what if I enter my phone number and it is not working? It's a defect, right? So it, is, it should work. Every feature, every single feature should work as it is expected. It is expected to work with both email address and phone number. Then it is our job to make sure that it is working both ways. We, if we will test just email thing and then the phone number we don't test. And then later if, the, uh, if it is not working, then hey, I test it with email. It is working fine. That is not the answer. You have to test both the things. So that is that question we have to ask ourselves. That do all the features features work as expected or not? What was expected from login? Is it I'm getting that or not? Okay. Another expectation is negative expectation. That if you enter a wrong password, what is happening? Is it giving you an error message or not? Sometimes you just enter a wrong password and you will not neither it will log in the application nor you will get an email address. You will be wondering what is happening. I entered email address, still I'm not logging into the application. Why? So for that error message is very important. They will tell you that you entered a wrong error message, password. That is why you are not allowing you to log in your you right password. Then you'll get an idea that oh I entered a wrong password, that is why I cannot log into my account. So that is also very important. So neg negative testing is one of the very important way of testing the application and there only you will find most of the defects because positive scenarios one developers will take care of it. Though we have to test that also. But with defects most of the time it comes in negative scenarios. Okay? And you have to always think of the negative scenario. Because positive has been given by the client only. Okay? There's no brain required for the positive scenario because they have told that application has to work that way. What what brain you are applying that, right? Nothing. You are just Nothing is there. But negative, no, you should always be attentive. What can go wrong? Whenever you get some application, you should always think, then what can go wrong if I do this? Where the, if the user will use it in that way, what might go wrong? I should test that thing. You know, the way in the beginning, maybe they never tested what might go, go wrong when the user enters a wrong password. And then later they got to know that nothing is happening or they are being navigated to the home page or no message is coming. Then, then they came up with the idea of giving an error message. So likewise, negative scenario you should always think of. Okay? Huh, then next is, are there defects in the software? So obviously, that too you have to think only because we are the tester and we have to, obviously before giving, uh, before you know, saying that the testing is 100% completed, we ourselves make sometimes you know, when like next day is the deadline and we have to give the it happens with me also, you know, and if some important module is left, we be in so much of tension, you know, because we have to test everything and then only we can say that everything is done. 
because you know that if a three case will happen, you like it will be a very good you know impression on you. And once see getting job is not the only thing. Once you get the job, you have to be perfect in your job, right? There'll be again there'll be so many things, surprises, this that, and all these things will be counted. So we when you test an application, you have to make sure you're testing it perfectly. And there should be they obviously there will be never like no defect at all, but there should be as minimum defect as it can be. And even if that defect is there, if, if you point it out, it is well and good. You should just, you know, give it like these are the defects, though it is not happening all the time, but sometimes it happens, so I have made a note of it right now. Okay. Okay. And the most important one is what is the overall overall risk when the software is deployed? So you thought about all those things. And the most important one is what is the overall risk when the software is deployed? What do you think I mean by that? What do you mean by deploying the software? What is deploying the software? No, see, the software that we are developing is not yet in the market, right? See, these examples which I am giving you, that they have already been deployed. That is why we can use them, okay? But the software that we, the, we in the IT industry we designed, that is already not deployed. That is the one we are building from the scratch, or sometimes maybe we are using the previous version of it. And the next version will be deployed again and again. So that means the software we are working on it, as of now only we are using it. And that is the whole idea behind testing, you know. So that before making before it is going to the users, we should find out everything and we should clean up the software and software should be percent ready for the use by the users. So that is what till now it was under you know our organization. Nobody was using it, only the testers, developers were using it. But the final phase is the deployment, you know. And when you're deploying the software, you have to make sure that the, the, the you know, person is ready for use. And when the users, users will use it, they will not find any issues. Uh, that is why, see, when you test an user, when you test an application, basically you have to test as a user. For example, if you are testing an application, you should never take it. Test it as just you are testing it. You should think of your friend, like how your friend will use it. Different people have different way of using an application, right? For example, you are a straight person, you will just use it simply. There will be other person, they will use it in a different way, right? There will, there will be other person, they are like rash users, they will tap, 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 enter. You should just see that, okay, if I am everything fast, whether the application is working or it is crashing. And I was, I, my first project was mobility project. They know if you do something, double click, it will crash. <laughs> the application will break down there itself. So all those things you have to, you know, check. Like if I do double, many users they have this habit. I am a very, you know, impatient user. So I'll just enter something. I'll start clap, 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 enter, enter, enter. Sometimes if the application is not ready for it, there will be memory leakage and the application will crash over there. So you have to do all kind of, that is called monkey testing, you know. You have to act like a monkey and then you have to test the application. Like how the rash user will lose the application and whether in that scenario we can use the application or not. Okay? Yeah. So these are the questions that we need to ask whether the application, when we are testing the application. Okay? So now, can you explain what all these things once you... All these points you just read it and you explain what they do. Uh, yeah, next class you I'll ask you. Today I'm telling you. Example like it works as expected. Can you give me an example? I'll give you I'll give you the login example. That one you can see. See, uh, if 
we want to sign up for first time, so mm -hmm. we have to register for the first time uh, before using any application. So for that, uh, we have the functional requirements such as sign up. We have to be proper. Mm -hmm. So if we if we not uh, sign up for the first time, then uh, if we not if we are not registered for the first time, then if we are go, going to log in, so we should not log in, log in and uh, mm -hmm. then we should not take that particular page. So we should show that. We have to sign up for first time. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, sure. And then uh, the defect in this okay, yeah, should be there should be a small defect so uh, in the uh, application. Yeah, one second. When I'm telling there should be a small defect, see that defect, it should be, even you should not be knowing it. If you know it, you should obviously make sure that the defect is fixed. Sometimes it happens that testers also they miss two things. So, but we have to make sure that nothing is, no, for our knowledge, there should, the defect is 100% bug free. Testers will say it is 100% bug free. Huh. Not that there is a defect in the Hmm. Yeah. So you should make sure that for your end you have tested everything as properly and it is 100%. See, when you use, use the operating system, Windows and all, it is from such a big company. Do you think it is completely bug free? It is not. It has a lot of bugs. And if you start testing the operating system, we can only point out many bugs. But since we are the user of time, we just want to use it properly, so we keep using it. But everything has a defect. Only thing is, it is unknown to us. And as far as it is unknown to us, we don't care, right? Because we have to use the application for our use, and it is if it is usable and we are not finding any difficulty, why should we just get into finding the defect, right? We don't buy an application to find the defect; we buy it to use it, right? So that should be the agenda that it should be usable. Hmm. And next, and most important one is what is the overall risk in software defect? So for the first time, if you are reading or if you are creating any application, so it's from the scratch. Uh, to take care of all the uh, features and all. Uh, yeah, okay, wait. So, deployed means, see, deployed, when an application is being deployed, that means it is now ready for the use by the users. See, till now we, okay. For example, whatever software we develop, we don't have developed for our only for our use, right? We develop it for others to use it. And then only our software will be successful. For example, this operating system, the Windows. Microsoft is not designed just for their use, right? They have designed for all other people to use it. And more people who use Microsoft, more famous operating system is becoming, right? So the idea behind designing any software is not for ourselves. It is for someone else to use it. And that is and that is why we test it. 